Okay, well, obviously I'm very happy to be here and uh, well, uh, we have many joint papers with Pasha and in fact if you uh, look on the archive, on Math Science Net, uh, various co-authors are show up in different sizes and so Pavel is the largest font uh, attached to me. Uh, uh, but the, the, the show. I think it is true. I mean, ah, yeah, 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 probably Pavel has uh, ten times more co It's probably more impossible to, to follow because I'm not able to write a list of, you know, hundreds of people there. Yeah. No, it's impossible. They were all yeah. written such small letters that... Right, <laughs> right, right. It goes to, to zero, kind of, yeah. Now, I, I don't have uh, joint papers with Andre, but at least, as far as I remember, you may correct me, that uh, you used our car when you are preparing for your driver's <laughs> test. <laughs> am, I, am I right? <laughs> uh, is that right? Uh, no, I think so. You was uh, driving this in circles uh, on this. No. But did he crash the car? No, I think he was good. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, okay, it, it was my. And also, I believe we all share the same birthday as was mentioned yesterday, uh, so, okay. Uh, right, so, uh, uh, all right, so uh, uh, G is always a com uh, well connected reductive uh, hmm? Is there a darker pen? Uh, there's black one, I don't know how much darker, is it? No. Uh, no? I, will I can try I a new one. Blue might be better. I think blue, I mean, all previous people used blue. So, so connected. Reductive. Uh, oh, we see. Uh, now let's say L is a levy. subgroup in G. And then uh, in this setting, Lustig, many years ago, introduced uh, the notion of character sheaf. Uh, so, so this was meant to kind of be a geometric sub uh, counterpart of characters of reductive groups, of finite groups, uh, G over FQ. Uh, so he developed some beautiful theory, uh, geometric uh, analog of that, character sheaves. So these are certain uh, equivariant perverse sheaves on G. And in particular, he, he introduced certain functors. So we have character sheaves uh, uh, on G. Uh, and uh, we also have character sheaves on the levy, on L. And he introduced certain functors uh, between these things. So there's an induction functor from sheaves on the levy to, to the sheaves on the big group, and the adjoint functor of restriction, So which are kind of uh, geometric substitutes for uh, induction and restriction of representations. Uh, and one of the theorems he proved is uh, that uh, these functors are exact. So uh, he proved uh, so in his language that means that uh, these are certain perverse sheaves. So the functors send perverse sheaves to perverse sheaves. Uh, uh, now. Uh, uh, the, the definition of in the address uh, makes sense not only for character sheaves, it makes sense for any sheaves which are in, invariant, uh, equivariant unto the adjoint action. And in fact, uh, throughout my talk, uh, if I talk about the G action on itself, on, G, uh, on itself, it means the adjoint action. And more recently, uh, several people, in particular Bezrukovnikov, <laughs> oh, so maybe I should write it here. Uh, so Bezrukovnikov uh, 
uh, and Yamdin are uh, considered uh, the general setting where one takes uh, some derived ca equivariant derived category of uh, G and equivariant derived category uh, on the Levy, again by the adjoint action of Levy on itself, and one can perfectly define uh, the same functors by the same formulas in and res. Uh, and then they prove that this, these functors are again exact. So uh, uh, theorem of Bezer, Kalnikov, and Yondin. So this was about a year ago uh, that, again, and and res are exact. Now, uh, another new feature here that uh, so is hidden in what this derived category is. So they consider several settings. So there's an elliptic setting of constructible derived categories. Uh, one can also do it for D modules, uh, which is just according to Riemann Hilbert correspondence is the same as perverse sheets. But in, in other, an essential new uh, type is that they, cons they consider not necessarily holonomic <coughs> module. So this is uh, one of the options here. Uh, now, uh, today I will uh, restrict to a very special case. So in a sense, uh, there will be no new results today at all. But uh, so I will first uh, only consider D modules. And second, I will only consider Levy to be the maximal torus. So today, uh, so you can forget about L altogether. Uh, throughout today, uh, L is T is the maximal torus uh, in G. So somehow, uh, one of the points of t even talking about this is that in this case, everything, including proofs, are so simple and nice that it's worth talking about this case. Uh, Uh, all right, so now uh, to do this, I, I need, uh, so let me at least define these functors in, in this uh, case. So uh, to define these functors, one uses uh, a standard diagram which involves the Grotendieck Springer resolution, and then you pull push on the certain maps. Oh, so here is the diagram. So one uh, defines G tilde to be the set. Of, uh, so this is Grotendieck Springer. So it pairs uh, G and B, where B is a Borel, uh, and G is an element contained in, in B. Uh, and there are two maps. Uh, so this is a grotendieck springer map uh, P, just forgets about B. And there is another map uh, Q uh, to the maximal torus, which I think of as a B mod the commutator. Uh, and the map is uh, you take GB and send it to uh, G mod uh, B bracket B. Yeah, and uh, and so uh, now one defines uh, in the address. So this is a pair of ad adjoint functors. Uh, so uh, in uh, is defined as. So there are several options depending on which functors on D modules you choose. I follow the ones with uh, used by Bezrukarnikov and Yomdin. Uh, and in this notation is this, this up, so I, I choose a slightly different shift. Uh, so these, these are D-module functors, so this is D-module push forward, and this is uh, the function D-module pull back, which is just the uh, O-module push pull back. But in, in usually for D-modules, uh, the corresponding object is uh, Q up a shriek, which differs from this by a shift. But I use the most naive one, uh, just this. So this is just the definition. And the corresponding adjoint functor S uh, is uh, uh, Q lower star uh, P upper shriek. So uh, the map Q is smooth, so it doesn't really matter shriek or star to use. But P is not smooth. And so 
I have to write this, but because I, I, I did use the wrong shift here, you have to shift here by uh, dimension of G minus dimension of T. All right, so now, uh, as, as uh, the title involves uh, the notion of Harishandra module, so now to relate this to Harishandra modules, I need some more notation. So uh, G, German G is the Lie algebra of G. So UG is the enveloping algebra. Algebra. Uh, ZG, I don't really know whether you use it anywhere, so maybe I won't use it. Is it? Uh, all right, so what else? Uh, yeah, the w, w is the while group. Uh, uh, okay, and so now uh, D of G is the ring of differential operators on G, algebraic differential operators on G. And inside here we have G invariant differential operators uh, DG alpha G again under the adjoint action. Uh, and so now the, there will be two important modules. The first module, ah, sorry. And, and uh, so uh, the, I will denote by this. So this is the, the set of vector fields generated by the adjoint action of the Lie algebra. I think of them as uh, so vector fields, they sit inside differential operators. So I think of it as a subspace in here. Uh, and then uh, the first main object is uh, the following D module. It's D of G mo uh, mod the left ideal generated by that. So I mod out left ideal generated by adjoint vector fields. Uh, now this guy uh, has uh, the following structure. First of all, it's a left D module. But it is also a right module over another algebra. Uh, and this is a general feature of Hamiltonian reduction. Uh, so, uh, so we have uh, D of G action on the left on N. And also there is a right action of the algebra uh, D of G mod D of G and G, upper G. So this is an algebra, and uh, it acts on it on the right. And now uh, an important theorem, which is a combination of several theorems. The first one is a construction, which is called the radial map, radial parts construction by Harishandra, uh, plus two theorems of Levasseur and Stafford. So some of this was proved uh, for classical groups also by Wallach slightly earlier. Uh, says that this algebra is in fact uh, 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 a very nice algebra. So we say that uh, it is isomorphic to the algebra of differential operators on the torus. Uh, specifically, uh, so it says that uh, this is there's a canonical isomorphism with uh, differential operators on the torus invariant under the while group. And so uh, this n can be now thought of as a bimodule. Uh, so n is uh, d of g, comma d of t up a w bimodule. All right, and now uh, the main player is the Harishandra bimodule. So, so Harishandra bimodule. Uh, is uh, M, uh, which is N. Uh, so I use the uh, the right action of this. Uh, to extend the action uh, to the action of all differential operators on the torus. Okay. So this is obviously by construction. So this is a dg, uh, comma dt bimodule.
Uh, okay, and so now the theorem says, the first theorem uh, describes induction and restriction in the case of maximal torus uh, in terms of M in a completely trivial way. Uh, so part one says that the uh, induction functor uh, is given by tensoring with M. And since this is in the derived category, so this is just this. And, and moreover, it is exact. This is what is exact. And if you have a functor which is given by tensoring, you can immediately write the adjoint functor. And so uh, restriction is. Uh, so, so this functor. No, I will talk about it. So this is the kind of the heart of the story. So this is uh, uh, our home uh, over D of G uh, from M blank. And again, it's exact. Now, uh, in the case, if you forget about derived categories and go to abelian categories, then uh, something I it becomes even, my, uh, even more transparent. And so let me mention this. Uh, OK, so now for abelian categories. So for abelian categories, uh, so uh, I will talk about restriction. Uh, so uh, so I will talk about the functor re res upper node, which corresponds to the zero. So this is a derived functor, but I'm only taking zero cohomology. Uh, well, and then so we, uh, the first equation is uh, generally even in the derived category. I just use the definition of what M is. So if I take our home over dg of m. Uh, well, m is a tensor product, so this is our home uh, uh, from n tensor d of t, d of t, w, this. Uh, and this can be rewritten as, so let me put some e here. Just This is this just uh, running object. Uh, and then if you have our home from a tensor product to something, this is the same as uh, uh, our home. Uh, you can move this n. To, it's a bimodule, so you can move it. So it's our home over uh, dt upper w, uh, dt uh, uh, ho our home uh, over dg n e. Uh, but now, if I'm only if I forget about this R, just do it uh, for home, then things become extremely simple. Uh, namely, home from n to anything. And now remember that home was defined as dg mod the adjoint action of g. So if you have a take a home from mod by the adjoint action, it means that it's just taking variance under the adjoint action. So this is just e upper g. And so then the formula becomes that uh, this restriction node of E is just the usual home over dt upper w uh, from d of t uh, to invariance of g. That's it. Uh, now, uh, so your G models are not necessarily equivalent? No, uh, they are. And that's, that's the point. So now uh, it will be, it's easy to prove. E is not necessarily equivalent. It is. And uh, since I'm working at the level of abelian categories, they're actually strongly equivariant. Now, for a strongly equivariant d-module, taking g invariance is an exact functor by definition. Uh, and now uh, one can also very easily prove that this is a projective module over this. And so this functor is exact automatically. You don't have to prove anything. Uh, it's exact. On the nose. So at the level of the abelian categories, uh, exactness is just comes for free from this interpretation. Mm, and also, there's another nice corollary. Uh, you can see what is the kernel of this functor. 
it's uh, those D modules, equivalent D modules, which do not have any invariance at all. So the kernel, so corollary, uh, the kernel of res upper node uh, uh, is just simply uh, those uh, D modules such that EG is zero. Uh, now, uh, I will basically not talk about derived categories today. Uh, in the derived category setting, things become, for the restriction, things become more complicated. And one reason they become more complicated is that you have first to define what categories I was talking about. In the case of uh, induction functor, uh, I don't have to do it because I start with D modules on the torus, and then that's D modules, and that's it, derived or non-derived. But uh, since on the G side, I have to take a equivariant D module, so I have to take equivariant derived category. And first, I have to define it. And then to, to say that the function is exactly, you really have to work with that derived category. So I will not talk about it at all. Uh, all right. So uh, now let me, uh, so this, this, these two statements uh, have a very nice interpret reformulation in terms of certain properties of N itself. And, uh, I will not explain why are they equivalent, but in fact, they're equivalent to a list of properties of n. And they, they are kind of nice. So uh, I will state this before I go further. So first, uh, uh, let me introduce one simple notation. So uh, since n itself is equivariant under the adjoint action, uh, I can look at its isotopic components under the adjoint action. So given a finite dimensional irreducible representation sigma of uh, G, uh, I will denote by N upper sigma, uh, just sigma isotopic component of N. Of N. Uh, now we ha N is a bimodule, and obviously, uh, the action of uh, differential operators on T uh, commute with the G action. And so each isotopic component is, is a, again, a D of T module. So it's, uh, it's not a D of G module, because the left action is lost. Uh, but it's a D of T upper W module. And in fact, it's finely generated. One can show this. OK, and now uh, uh, I will write theorem prime which is, in fact, equivalent to, the to the first theorem. But it's entirely in terms of n itself. Uh, so now the first statement is that uh, this relates to the induction functor, that n is coin Macaulay uh, in the following sense. So if I compute x, I treat it as a dg module. Forget about t the torus. Uh, K of N DG, uh, then uh, this is zero except one degree. And in that degree, it's N again. It's self-dual. If uh, K uh, is the difference of dimension, so it's dimension of G minus dimension of T, and zero otherwise. Uh, and uh, right, and uh, the second property, which relates to the restriction functor, uh, is uh, uh, now it's about the action of D of T. And the fir uh, it, there are two properties. The first is that N is faithfully flat uh, flat uh, over uh, D of T. W in the usual sense. And moreover, it has this nice uh, feature. Again, I can do this kind of duality. Uh, so I take uh, x uh, now over dt upper w from, I take, now I think I can do it component, isotopic component by component. Uh, so I take this into upper w. And again, it sits in only one degree, but now the degree is zero because it's flat, so it supports everything. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's n, the isotopic component of the quantum gradient representation. 
f f uh, k is zero uh, and zero else. So it's self-dual in this twisted way. All right. So uh, now uh, there is a comment about this theorem, uh, namely. Uh, Somehow the most surprising among, at least I find the most surprising about this statement is the statement that n is flat over this. In fact, the corresponding uh, commutative quasi-classical analog is completely false. And this was very, I, I could, didn't believe that this could be true. <laughs> I mean, actually I asked many people, including Stafford, that it kind of, uh, because it's completely counterintuitive. No, uh, let me, let but, me. But quite, quite just yes, so this is this kind of strange non-commutative phenomenon, but here it's even more surprising, I believe. Right, but uh, here it's, it's different. So, uh, so namely, uh, let's look at the singular support of this n. Now, by definition, I mod out the adjoint action. And so the singular support, which is a subset of the cotangent bundle of G, and it's exactly the commuting variety. Uh, in other words, it's uh, the set of pairs, uh, I don't know, G uh, A uh, in uh, G times G, uh, which commute. Now, if you want to treat, uh, uh, so this is an analog of N, the associated. And now if you want to look at it as a module over this, you have to look at the map. Uh, uh, the commuting variety has a natural map uh, to the cotangent bundle of the torus uh, mod w. And the map is very simple. You take a pair GA and look at the semi-simple part simultaneously. And since they commute, this makes sense. So, so this is a map. This map is not flat at all. So the fibers, it's not flat, not, not for some complicated reason, just the fibers have different dimensions. So, and so. All right, so uh, my plan is to essentially, I will prove, at least I, try, I will try to prove the statement, all statements about induction because they're very nice. The proof is very short and very nice. But before that, I want to mention an application of this, uh, uh, which is a conjecture uh, which is partially proved by uh, by uh, Tao Xian Chen. Uh, so I want to, to explain this a little bit, very sketchy. He calls it a vanishing conjecture. Uh, implying being what? Uh, no, there are two types of conditions. One is with respect to the left action of D of G, and the other with respect to the right action of D of T. Right. The flatness is with respect to D of T. Right. Coin Macaulay kind of, there are two Coin Macaulay. One is uh, in degree difference of dimensions. This is with respect to G. And that's because this N is not holonomic, and so the, the natural dimension is not half dimension, but something else. And with respect to D of, uh, of T, it's just dimensions, um, degree, the relevant degree is zero, and then we have this counter gradient representation. Uh, sorry? Over, kind of uh, over both, but in different degrees. I mean, both separately, not simultaneously. Uh, all right, so vanishing conjecture. Uh, this is due to, uh, I never remember how to write it. So he has a paper on the archive uh, partially. So he proved this, so, the, so his setting is a setting of a logic 
chiefs, uh, and he proved it in that setting in for GLN, and I believe he also told me that he can prove it for D modules, but what I will say will be a different approach. So, so Uh, Vanny, <laughs> Vanny. Uh, yeah, so something is wrong. Something is Okay, now the setting is uh, some, some stops, uh, steps are, I mean, the, the thing is very sim sim f uh, similar to the previous talk by Sasha. So we fix uh, a maximal unipotent. Uh, U of G, and fix again uh, gen uh, a generic character, uh, gen general character, non-degenerate character of U. Ah, and also maybe I should write it, uh, uh, I do need the Borel, so this is uh, actually uh, So, and chi is a non-degenerate character of uh, u. Uh, and then uh, uh, what I'm interested in is again uh, something about finding dimensional analog of what Sasha did. So I'm interested in the Whittaker category <coughs> of, uh, of G. And in my setting, this means that I'm taking, uh, so I'm taking sheaves on G, which are uh, chi equivariant with respect to the left action of u and right action of u. So these are, this is my notation for this. Uh, now, uh, in the allergic setting, that's it. Uh, but in the d-module setting, one can say it more concretely. Uh, namely, this is the same as modules over a particular algebra. So this is mod h. Uh, where H is just a Hamiltonian reduction. Uh, it's, uh, again, two-sided Hamiltonian reduction of the ring of differential operators uh, with respect to, so the notation is essentially the same. So you can just do it like that. Uh, now, and uh, the point is that uh, it's a theorem uh, which related to the quantum total lattice which says that this algebra has a totally different description. Uh, this H is isomorphic to the spherical subalgebra of a certain nil dacha. So uh, spherical. So, so this is a quantum total. Yeah. Yes. Spherical subalgebra. Is it generated by quantum total Newtonians and the functions of the force, right? Uh, but this is spherical, so. Uh, Yeah, well, yeah, so so yeah I will subalgebra of nil daha. And as a particular output of this theorem uh, is that, huh? Yeah, yeah, so this, uh, this goes under the name quantum total whatever, but as a, at least one output of this is that there is a natural embedding of the ring of W invariant differential operators into this H, which is not obvious at all. It doesn't, if you just use this definition, you don't see any differential operators in there at all. But it turns out if in the Daha description, it does contain this automatically, and so there is a map like that. Hmm? Okay. And now, uh, now I can uh, formulate uh, uh, the conjecture in this setting. Now, uh, the conjecture involves a certain functor into what usually it's called, uh, it's not restriction, it's called the Harishandra functor uh, into the horocycle space, but I will write it in a uh, very concrete way. So the, uh, we consider the following diagram. So we have the projection from G to G mod U, and inside here we have uh, B mod U, which is our torus. Uh, 
and uh, so this is let's say beta. I'll be a little bit sloppy uh, to, to save time. Uh, so now the conjecture basically says that what happens if you take a module over H, forget about H and treat it as a module over this, then use parabolic induction, and then push down to G mod U. Now, I will formulate this concretely in my language. So the conjecture says the following. Uh, so for any uh, H module, uh, let's say F, uh, we can do the following. We can take, uh, so uh, this is the version of parabolic induction that I'm using. Uh, we take derived and their product of with f. So we completely forget h action and just look at it this. Uh, and then uh, take its push forward as a d module. So this is a guy on g, on g, a d module on g. You can push it forward here. And now there are two statements. Uh, the first statement is that, in fact, this guy is supported, in fact, on d module inside g module. Uh, on B mod U, inside G mod U. And moreover, it is essentially the, 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 the F you started with. Uh, moreover, moreover uh, uh, this guy is isomorphic to uh, DT tensor DT wf so you see that this is an instance of actually m is more important than n and so this is where the shadow of this m in this statement is, is it a simple algorithm yes now the, i'm i'm translated a everything in the d module setting uh, but uh, so i can use the machinery i described the above to prove this and the important advantage of the module setting that in order to prove this there's a universal case, namely you can take f to be h itself. And essentially, if you prove it for h, you're done. Uh, and so in the analytic setting, there is, no, <laughs> there is no universal shift like free module. And so it's not clear where to get started. Uh, yeah, but is the, is the conjecture a theorem? No, I can prove this. Uh, and I believe that uh, Tao Xian can also prove it in a different way. But it's not written down. Yeah. So. I haven't written my argument, and he hadn't <coughs> hasn't written his argument. So let's put it like that. Uh, uh, so now, uh, basically, there are two ingredients uh, in the proof. Uh, very simple. So the first one is, again, some non-commutative feature. Why is it called Bennett? I didn't say it. Well, because the support is 0 somewhere. Oh. Okay. Uh, somehow, in the logic setting, one of the <laughs> kind of key points that he invented was that it's not clear Somehow you have to explain what, how do you substitute this. So you have to redefine your category in, in terms of the torus, and he invented a very clever condition how to do that. Yes, your conjecture follows from the allergic version of this. So it's really a very nice uh, statement. And it has n nothing to do with your particular setting. It's a much more general. So the, the key point was to realize that. Uh, so now the, there are two ingredients. One is the work with cash done, which I will not mention at all. And the second one is the following property. Uh, so uh, somehow the ring of fractions of this and this are the same. So it's really the matter is how one is sitting inside the other. In particular, we can ask the question, when is a module over this? When it, can it be extended into that? If it can be extended, it's unique. So the only question is, I give you a D module on T, which is W invariant, and ask, can I extend it to an H module or not? And there is a very explicit criterion, uh, which is it's an instance of Marita business stuff, which has no, again, no, have, has no commutative analog. And this is the following proposition. Uh, a, uh, uh, a DTW module. Mm, because basically you invert, it's a kind of micro utilization. You invert, uh, well, the Masur operator involves, involves some denominator. That's what you need to invert. Anyway, uh, 
if, if uh, I give you a D model, if it can be extended to an H model, this extension is unique. This is a simple fact. So the only question is whether it extends or not. And this is a criterion. So a DT module uh, uh, F uh, uh, has an H, can be, well, uh, can be extended, I'll just write, has an H action. If and only if uh, the following holds, so we can take f. Uh, so inside uh, uh, the algebra of differential operators, we just have uh, invariant dif uh, translation invariant differential operators, and this is just the symmetric algebra of the Cartan uh, W invariance. Uh, we extend it to the full Cartan, and this has a natural map from f. So, I mean, these are constant coefficient differential operators. They, they in, embed into all differential operators, and W invariants and then embed into W invariants. And the fact is that it extends if and only if this is actually an isomorphism. Uh, again, this, is, this can never happen on the commutative level. Uh, so, so there's an explicit characterization when, uh, uh, when what, is, what Fs do we actually talk about? All right, so that's, that's, about, that's all I wanted to say about this uh, uh, vanishing stuff. So now I want to this explain, try to explain uh, uh, the I mean, uh, how to prove all the, all the statements I made about the induction factor uh, and to, sh to kind of try to convince you that everything is very simple. Yes. Yes. So no. No. What do you mean? If I take Gamersonian reduction with respect to you and Kai? Yes. No. No. It's no. True. Both things are true. Yeah, but it's a wrong embedding somehow. Yeah. It's a wrong embedding. But it's a embedding. Yeah, there are two. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the same one, two ah. in different directions. Yeah. So they in different. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. So the classical, p the people who wrote Toda in the first place, many, many, uh, many, many years ago, so they used the, the embedding you used, and then it's a rational system. I mean, the, the, the Hamiltonian is a rational function. But in this embedding, the Hamiltonian has no poles at all. No, it's not an embedding. I mean, in this picture, Hamiltonian is an honest element of the algebra. It has no, yeah, it has no, it's a, so that's why you need this Whitaker business. So for the rest of the time, I uh, discussed the proofs, the ideas of the proof. And the first uh, thing, which was known for a long time, so this is a link between algebra and geometry. And it's provided by an old result of Hota and Kashiwara. Uh, and uh, this is the following. So let's consider the following map. Remember, we, had, we started our discussion with the diagram G tilde, the springy resolution maps to G and T. Now let's take these maps together. So you have this map P cross Q, and this goes to G times T. And let's call this map Pi. And then an old theorem uh, of Hot and Kashiwara. Uh, says that if I take the direct image uh, of the shift O on G tilde as a D module, then the direct image is M, the Harishandra D module. Now, this is really a very simple theorem, and the proof is rough, roughly it, it, the proof takes uh, just a paragraph. Namely, uh, uh, M was defined in terms of some Harishandra uh, homomorphism, radial parts. Now, this guy has a section, by definition, the image of 1, which uh, by construction of Harishandra, who didn't know about D modules, anything about D modules, but in fact, the section satisfies all the relations given by Harishandra. So this means that there is a map from M to this. But now computing the single support, you see that they both have 
single support Lagrangian irreducible subvariety. Therefore, both sides are simple holonomic modules. So any morphism is a an isomorphism by the Schur lemma. That's it. Uh, so the proof is really very simple. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there, are, uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah. So th this is the Lie algebra con counterpart. There's another paper uh, uh, where they do the group counterpart, but in a s different, slightly different setting. And then there is yet another paper by Kashiwara he, where he does, I believe, maybe just in this setting, but I'm not sure. And where he actually introduced N. And N was also introduced completely separately in the Lie algebra case by Levasseur Stafford also. So this is some history behind it, which I don't want to talk about. Uh, all right, so this is the first ingredient. And now I want to prove that the induction functor is exact. Uh, how many? I have a lot of time, so I will be done. So I, I claim that this follows from the following completely general lemma. Uh, uh, so. Uh, so the, the proof consists of uh, two parts. One is this, which is CC, and the other is the following general lemma. So uh, we consider the following general setting. Suppose I have a diagram, which will in application be G tilde G and T uh, of this sort. Uh, why? So I'll still denote this by P and this by Q. Uh, and then I will also write uh, X times Y. Uh, so this is pi which is p times q. And then I have projections. So let's call this p bar and this q bar. And uh, in this generality, let me call curly m for what's going to be m. So this is, by definition, uh, the same definition. So this pi lower star of O z. Okay. So then I claim uh, two, two facts. This is lemma. So I'm interested in the induction functor. And so in this general setting, it means the following. So, so part one. Uh, so I'm interested in the functor, just exactly what induction was. And it can be written in two ways. So this is the first claim. And this is very easy. So I can either do this. Ah, sorry, I forgot. Let's assume that x and y are affine, which is true in our case anyway. Z is not necessarily affine, but x and y. I, I, what I'm saying holds in general, but one has to put shift theoretic push forwards and pull backs everywhere, and I don't want to do that. So, uh, uh, or you can also write it as uh, p bar, and now I want to, no, sorry, I don't want to know p bar at all, uh, just uh, m uh, and the product l. So you can either tensor over O, but then you have to push down using D modules, or you can, you don't have to push down at all, but then you have to take tensor product over D. Uh, and claim two, that if uh, pi is proper uh, and uh, q is smooth, uh, then uh, m is flat over O of y. So now I'll first explain why this implies. Uh, uh, so I claim that this implies that induction is exact. Uh, so, uh, so now, OK, so now let me write this down. Uh, where is it? Uh, so I claim that if, uh, uh, if this holds, then this functor is exact. Uh, now. 
according to the first formula, we can write uh, this as, uh, as a composition of two functors. I will use uh, this description. Uh, so it's the composition of uh, p bar low star composed with tensoring. Now, uh, part two of the lemma says that m is flat over this, and so this functor is exact. So this is exact. Uh, ah, sorry, and this is uh, in the our setting, it's important. Otherwise, it's just in our specific setting. So this is O of t. So now we are in our setting of induction. Uh, so uh, OK, so this is exact by part two of the lemma. I, uh, notice that in, in the in the Grodnik Springer case, this map is indeed this is the Grodnik Springer map. It's proper and this is indeed smooth. So part two holds, exact by part two of the lemma. Now this function is not exact in general. It's a push forward. But now you notice the following: that any object of the form form M tensor anything. Uh, has a specific support, namely its support is at least, at most, the support of M itself. So the support of M tensor anything uh, is contained in the support uh, of M. And the support of M is easy to describe, namely it's the fiber product of G with T over the adjoint quotient. But now, uh, in general, the push forward is not exact. But the push forward with respect to a finite map is exact. And so we're done. No, no. It's a ten if you think of it carefully, this is the tensor product of two D modules over O. And uh, we know that uh, tensor product over O is indeed a D module. So this thing which you have inside the parameters mm -hmm. is it's a D module on G times T. It's D module here. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, because I, I'm a fine in principle, I have to do pull back here, uh, then tensor over all of both, and then push down here. But since I'm F fine, I'm just keeping this part. Okay. You will see it in, uh, in the proof. So, so, uh, so I, I don't raise down. So, so, uh, so this guy is exact. Uh, on uh, module supported uh, supported uh, on uh, this uh, uh, g times uh, over g double slash g. Now, in fact, I, I have hidden one part under the rug. Maybe I should mention it. Uh, when Bezrukalnikov and Yomdin uh, proved exactness of int, one of the in the uh, so they, they use some smallness of lustig type uh, maps, uh, but um, uh, in the case of demo of non holonomic D modules, uh, all these smallness things are not enough for the reason that uh, in the non holonomic setting, I mean, one uses that smallness result ensure that something is very self dual, and uh, this gives essentially what you want, but for non holonomic D modules. Uh, uh, VRT duality, unfortunately, doesn't preserve the abelian category. As we know, on holonomic D model, this is an exact functor, but on non holonomic D model. And so this self duality argument is not sufficient. And they do a very clever thing, which depends on the results of Sam Raskin on what is called non, uh, non holonomic defect uh, no, or holonomic defect. I don't, I don't remember. So he proved that something is preserved under some sort of. Def Deviation from holonomicity is preserved under the functors. And this is an argument based on the B function, clever way of extending B function type argument. Uh, and they use it. Now, here, uh, there's still uh, a shadow of this argument, but in this case, it's very simple. Namely, when I say that this is exact on D module support, and here, in principle, uh, the fact that the, the function push forward under the finite map is exact 
Uh, again, uh, it's well known and easy to prove for holonomic modules. For non-holonomic modules, in principle, one has to prove it. Uh, at least I, could, I, didn't, I don't know any reference for it. But in this case, it's a simple exercise. It's, uh, you really can do it. Uh, you don't need Ruskin at all or any holonomic defect. You can just prove it by hand. And it's a simple exercise on D modules. All right, so now it remains to prove the lemma. Uh, uh, so let me do this. And it's really. Uh, uh, completely trivial. Ah, sorry, I erased the diagram. So let me. So this was X. Uh, In my for the not for the torus, but I'm using a very specific projection. Uh, along the torus. So really, to pr at least the way I proved it, you can use it. it it's a general fact. Uh, you don't care about this G or anything. You, you use some finite map along the torus. And then you can use induction on the So the torus is a bunch of C stars. You induct on the number of C stars. And for a single C star, you do a calcul an explicit calculation, which is nice. Uh, all right, so now here is my diagram. Uh, so now I prove the lemma. So proof uh, of one of lemma. Uh, this is really uh, just direct application of the projection formula. Uh, let me write it down. Uh, this one. Uh, where is it? OK, so anyway. So now I want to compute. Uh, so this is p, so I want to compute p lower star q pull back. So I pull, pull back and push forward. I can do it uh, like this and then like that. And so I write, uh, so it's the same as p bar lower star, pi uh, lower star, pi upper star, upper pull back, and then q bar pull back. And if you have pull push with respect to a single map, uh, this is a projection formula. Uh, so if I put something here, uh, so you can write it as p uh, lower star bar. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so basically, it, uh, you write pi lower star of O of z uh, tensor over O with uh, q bar naught. So this is the projection formula. And this is, by definition, my m. Uh, and this is essentially the first equality. In the affine case, you can see that this is just the first equality. And now uh, the second equality, if you already know that uh, you push forward, so this gives this. So this implies. And now if you know, uh, so if you have a module on x cross y of the form something tensor over O of something else, and you have to push forward along the projection, uh, and this is just a definition of the module push forward. So the second equality follows from the first just by definition of what this is. If you look into a textbook what the uh, what module push forward is, uh, it's just exactly that. So uh, this uh, implies uh, somehow you see that uh, the interesting part is two, because that's what ensures exactness in this induction functor. But in this setting, again, it, it's a very simple and nice argument. Uh, and it would be great to have an extension of it to a parabolic setting for a general levy. Uh, I tried, but I failed. But that would make everything completely trivial. Uh, so, okay, so now let me prove. Now, what does it mean that something is flat over O? Well, I mean, we just use the definition. Uh, this equ ah, double star is this. So uh, it's just uh, to go from here to here, just use the, what this demon push forward is uh, using uh, HTT or Kashiwara. So somehow the the only the nicest ingredient is to 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 prove two. 
basically this is the heart of uh, all the exactness business for induction. Somehow, uh, right, okay, so let me now prove. Now, what do we have to check? That some, something, notice that this involves tensor product over O, and flatness is over O. So, uh, I'm sorry, this is flat to O, so you can forget about D modules for now. So we need to check the following. So we have an embedding of something into Y. And what we have to do is the following. We have to take the embedding uh, identity x uh, cross i. So we take x cross y <coughs> prime into x cross y. And what I flatness means that uh, uh, this m is flat over uh, O of y uh, says that for every such i, uh, uh, if we take derived restriction of this, there are no derived, uh, non-zero derived restrictions. So L upper K of identity X times I upper star of, so not, yeah, of M is zero for all K not equal to zero and all Y prime. So that's what we have to check. <coughs> Now one comes, uh, so the key point is the following observation, that uh, since uh, P is proper by assumptions, then of course uh, P times Q is also proper. Uh, and then if you have a direct image under, of a D module under a proper map, we, can, we know a standard S upper bound on the single support. So uh, have uh, upper bound on uh, SSM. Now, I claim, and this is checked just by, from the definitions, that uh, this upper bound plus the assumption that Q is smooth implies that this sub-variety uh, is non-characteristic uh, with respect to uh, a D module with a single support. And therefore, uh, there are no res non-zero restrictions. Non-zero cohomology. So, ah, sorry. So, yeah. So, uh, Q is smooth. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, what's wrong? It implies that uh, X cross Y prime. How can you use single support to prove that there's no high cohomology? I mean, you can prove single support of something is smooth. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry. No, non character so, sorry. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, I made the statement wrong. So every, uh, yeah, so I made it. I, in the general setting, what you prove is that, I said, uh, so in principle, in this formula, in the, in the abstract generality, M is not a demon, it's a complex, first of all. And then uh, what I'm claiming that each cohomology is either flat or zero. Now, in our case, we know because Springer resolution is semi small, it's actually a D module, and then that's what I'm claiming. So I'm completely fine. Implies that. Sorry. I so you literally write what does it mean to be non characteristic? Some co normal bundle intersects something else by zero, and you see that this holds. That's it. OK. Question? Ah, maybe uh, may make a, a, an. So somehow the idea, uh, and maybe it's a personal history, but somehow the idea came up with this argument is the following. So somehow. Uh, psychologically, the main problem with dealing with this theorem is that we used to deal with holonomic D modules. Uh, and so, uh, well, psychologically, the problem is how do we do with non-holonomic D modules? 
Now, uh, if you write on this induction things that basically there's this d module n, which is not holonomic, and this involves in the induction. Uh, and so the idea is that we don't like this n because it's not holonomic. So the trick of going from n to m makes it holonomic. <laughs> uh, m is holonomic, m, n is not. And so when you replace the map p by the map p times q, somehow you replace non-holonomic setting to holonomic setting. That's the secret <laughs> behind this. Yeah. But yeah, this is there. Okay. If you say anything, you change the algebraic structure from group to maybe ring. No, sorry. <laughs> but in this house, maybe you said uh, there's also a lot of uh, some planning uh, about the algebra. Uh, let's discuss it. No. He, first of all, he does with uh, works with the algebra, but uh, let's. I think it's a mistake. I'm confused uh, about various se several different things that you said. So no, this was just, I never didn't say explain anything about. So, but the question is, what the what, was the discussion somehow connected to this part or not? Uh, it's used the interpretation of induction as uh, tensoring with this Harish Chandra thing. At least this is what's used in the proof. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the mm -hmm. uh, it become character shift, shift, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It doesn't have uh, an nice description and some I see extension of this total system from the uh, Well that's what what somehow I don't since there's no formal question, I don't know how to answer it. Okay. I, I mean the statement that uh, of the theorem in particular implies what you say. See, if you know that induction is given by, by fo my formula, then it follows. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yes, this is what Lustig proved. But uh, for a non-holonomic D module, it's not clear what do you want. Well, as we know, there are some crazy simples which are not holonomic. And then, well, I think, uh, yeah. Well, the question is, can you prove it holonomic, but not necessarily characters? Uh, I believe it follows, but uh, yeah, it follows. You ne have need to use both restriction and induction. It's, in fact, an equivalence of category, so it is true. Wait, wait, in this, uh, this, this block, it's again, it's not written down, but the Lie algebra version was proved by Cunningham that but it's actually what these two. What Okay, let me, uh, I can explain to you later. Okay, last question. Here, you can see the most important thing in the book, which is the most important thing in the book. He thinks that the singular is not the same way, not the same way, but the same way, but the same way, but the same way. Поэтому его статья просто... Ну, сказал, она, это после, через месяц после того, как его статья была опубликована.